Penelope, how many times have I told you to stay away from Lily? I don't want to repeat myself. If you're a good wife to Adam and a good daughter-in-law to me, you have to do as I tell you. What do you mean? I'm Lily's mother. Why should I stay away from her? Don't make me laugh. You claim yourself as her mother, but what have you ever done that is good for her? You don't have the slightest clue about being a good parent, that's for sure. We've only been living together for around one month or two since the day my dear granddaughter Lily was born. But you've already shown how terrible you are at parenting. I'm trying my best, but it's still rather difficult as I haven't had much experience as a mother. Lily is my firstborn, you know. I'm still learning, and I do listen to your advice to improve my parenting skills. I told you from the start that you were no good to become a parent. I had a bad feeling about you from the moment I met you, and I was right. Adam is surely unlucky to have married the kind of woman like you. Look, if you really want what's best for Lily, then give her to me. I'm sure you've done your best, but it's clear that you're in over your head. I've been a parent for many years, and I know what it takes to raise a child properly. Lily deserves to be with someone who can give her the best possible care. I seriously don't understand what you're talking about. What have I ever done that was so wrong to Lily? Now you dare ask me that question? I specifically told you to constantly keep the heater on at maximum temperature, but you clearly didn't listen. What kind of mother are you? Do you really want to see your daughter freeze to death? Mom, if we keep maxing out the heater, the room temperature will be too high. And it's definitely not good for Lily. According to experts, the ideal room temperature for a baby is around 61 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This will help Lily feel comfortable, sleep well, and breathe more easily. What? You're crazy! Are you aware that Lily is just an infant? We can't subject her to any kind of cold or else she'll turn to ice. A mother wannabe like you can only be a danger to your child. I'm calling Child Protective Services so that they can put you in jail. Only then I'll be able to stop you from jeopardizing Lily's life. It's you who needs to stop, Mom. Stop trying to give Lily all kinds of food. She's too young for that, and it could make her choke or cause all sorts of health problems. Are you nuts? Lily is almost two months old. She needs real food now. You can't keep feeding her breast milk forever or she'll become malnourished. This is why I told you you're, you're too dumb to be a mother and you can't be fixed. What are you talking about? I already told you that's not true. I'm not sure why you keep bringing this up. I'm following the advice of my doctor. And they say that babies need to be fed breast milk for six months straight. There's no need to question me about this. See, this is why you're not fit to be Lily's mom. You clearly don't have a clue how to take care of a child. You're awful as a mother. If you keep raising Lily this way, she's going to grow up sick all the time. And it's going to be all your fault. Only breast milk is not enough for a baby. Plus, your milk is terrible and doesn't have any nutrients, so stop giving her that. You need to provide her with real food, like rice cereal, fruits, vegetables, and even meat when she gets a little older. This is how you feed and raise a healthy child, not with your stale breast milk. Lily could get sick because of that. I'm sorry, but I don't agree with you. I believe that breast milk is the best thing for Lily. And I'm not going to give her anything else. There's a lot of scientific evidence to support this, and I don't see any reason why you would want to deny that. Please, respect my decision, and don't try to give Lily any other food. Well, we can always replace your disgusting breast milk with cow's milk or formula milk. After all, anything is better than that. Another thing, Lily needs to exercise her lungs so you don't have to be so overprotective and do all kinds of stupid things to stop her from crying. You don't want Lily to grow up to be a rude and manipulative person like her mother, do you? Seriously. 
you might want to go read some actual research on child development before you start spouting off about baseless myths. Letting babies cry it out for too long is not good for them. And there's plenty of evidence to support that. In fact, it can actually be harmful to their development. So please, do your research and stop spreading misinformation. How dare you criticize my way of parenting? Look at Adam. I used the same method to raise him from when he was very little until now, and he turned out just fine. He's healthy, happy, and well-adjusted. So why should there be a problem? Look, I know you're too dull to raise a child, so just back down and leave everything to me. I'll take care of Lily, and I guarantee I can do that ten times better than you. You're living with me, so you have to follow my rules. You basically forced your way into our lives without even asking. Adam and I were living alone in our house, and then you suddenly showed up after I gave birth to Lily. You didn't even give us a heads up. You just left your husband behind all by himself and moved in with us. How do you think William feels about what you did? Don't you think it was unfair to him? Are you seriously saying that it's all my fault because I moved in to live with my son? Why can't a mother live with her own son? That's just plain ridiculous. I can't believe you would even suggest such a thing. Just ask Adam. Adam was so thrilled at the prospect of living together with me that he said yes without a moment's hesitation. He even told me he had been hoping for that for a long time. That's not true. Adam didn't say that. How dare you speak to me like that? After all I've done for you and this family, you have the nerve to disrespect me? I was the one who gave birth to your husband, and I deserve your respect. Show some gratitude for once. I used to have a lot of respect for you, but it's wearing thin. I don't know how much longer I can live with you because it's becoming more and more stressful. What do you mean? You're saying that all I'm doing is giving you stress? Such a drama queen. I'm sure you're just going around telling everyone else that I'm mistreating you to ruin my reputation, huh? Just when I thought you couldn't get any ruder. Rude? I'm not the one who's being rude. You're the one who's constantly criticizing my way of taking care of Lily. You disregard everything I do and force me to raise her your own way. You're constantly coming up with these non-scientific ways to raise Lily like tying a penny over her belly button, giving her inappropriate food and drinks, and, and keeping her inside the house all day, every day, because you're afraid she'll get sick if she's outside for even a second. I could literally write a whole list of your misconceptions about baby raising here. You're clearly not doing your research. What? Now you're trying to make me out to be the bad guy for taking care of my own granddaughter? Well, I must say, you're very good at twisting things around. I can see why you're so good at talking back to your own mother-in-law. You're unnatural. All I was trying to do was give you helpful advice so that you could raise your own daughter better. You twisted my words and used nonsensical scientific evidence to prove me wrong. Also, you could win our argument, right? What a petty thing to do. Mom, I'm not sure you're listening to yourself right now. Scientific evidence is not nonsensical. It's based on years of research and data collection. Scientists have more knowledge about baby raising than you or I do, so why would we ignore their findings? I'm not saying that your experience is invaluable, but it's important to consider all the evidence before making a decision. Enough! I don't want to hear any more words from you again. Poor Adam. My son made a huge mistake when marrying you. Let me knock some sense into your head. I'm your mother-in-law, and you need to follow my orders. Don't fight me on everything. I'm just trying to take good care of my granddaughter. Taking care of your granddaughter? You call snatching my lily from my hands and setting fire to the clothes I bought for her, taking care of her? When are you gonna stop being so mean to me? Seriously, I'm your daughter-in-law and I married your son, so I'm also part of the family. 
I told you not to buy anything for Lily. She doesn't need your filthy clothes or the ridiculous things you bought for her. They're hideous and not worthy for my granddaughter to use. I'm warning you, if you keep buying her stuff like that, I will throw everything in the trash. And I'm not even joking. I'm sorry if you feel offended, but I'm not going to let you dictate how I raise my daughter. I'm her mother, and I'm the one who makes the decisions about what's best for her. If you had advice that you think it's helpful, I'll listen to it. But I'm not going to take your advice just because you're my mother-in-law. I'm not going to risk my daughter's health just to make you happy. I'm the one who has to live with the consequences of my decisions, not you. So I'm going to do what I think is best for my daughter, and you're going to have to respect that. You know what? I cannot accept having a spoiled, uneducated woman like you as my daughter-in-law. I will not tolerate your disrespectful and ill-mannered behaviors toward me any longer. You think you're so important because you gave birth to Lily? Well, I gave birth too, but I was never as bossy and disrespectful to anyone like you are. I've done so much for you and our family, and this is how you choose to show me your gratitude and appreciation. What an ungrateful daughter-in-law. People like you never deserve to have kids, and people like you will only raise criminals. Why is protecting my own daughter's well-being being bossy? You keep claiming that you sacrificed yourself for this family, but what did you ever do that was actually helpful other than criticizing me? You never wake up in the middle of the night to feed Lily or rock her to sleep when she cries. You don't even lift one finger to help me with the housework. I'm the one who has to do all the cleaning, washing, cooking, and catering to Lily at the same time. What is that attitude of yours? You married my son, didn't you? So what's wrong with you taking on the chores? I see that you're so spoiled of a woman that you can't even stand doing a little housework, right? If you're gonna laze about and do nothing, then what's the point of keeping you around in this household? Besides, you're so terrible at preparing the food or doing the chores anyway, and I always have to redo everything for you. Look, I'm gonna have a word with Adam about all of this. I can't wait to see the dumb face you make when Adam kicks you out of the house. <laughs> Penelope, I see that you already packed your things and are ready to leave the house, huh? You made the right choice. No one in this family needs you, even Adam. I talked to Adam yesterday about kicking you out of the house, and he didn't even bother arguing with me about it. You know what my son said? He smiled and told me, do as you please, as long as it makes you happy. I guess he really hates you. <laughs> and even Lily can't stand her useless and bossy mom. Yeah, I'm leaving, mom. I can't take this anymore. You're always finding fault with everything I do, yelling at me, talking down to me, and criticizing my way of parenting. I'm tired of it. I'm leaving, and I'm not coming back until you learn to treat me with respect. So now you're finally showing your true colors, huh? I'm glad that you know your place and decided to get your ass out of my son's house. To tell the truth, you've been causing nothing but trouble since the first time I met you. It's a good thing that you finally came to your senses and realized that you're a terrible mother. You gave birth to his beautiful daughter. It means that you fulfilled your duty. Now get back here and get your garbage out of the house as quickly as possible. I'll be there to get my belongings soon, so don't worry about that. That's the spirit. And don't be too concerned about Lily. Me and my son are perfectly capable of raising Lily. You can rest assured that she's in good hands. In fact, Lily will be thriving without her evil mother dragging her down. Once I get back to take my belongings, I will leave and never return. So don't text or call me by then. <laughs> what? Why should I even bother texting or calling you? I only need Lily. I couldn't care less about you. In fact, I can't wait until you completely disappear from my life. You're such a disgrace to my family. One more thing. I already helped Adam to submit his divorce papers. So it will only be a matter of time until you and him are no longer husband and wife. What? Divorce papers? That's right. 
You and Adam are divorcing. You don't know how happy your husband was when I proposed the idea. He literally jumped with excitement and he signed the documents right after I gave them to him. Adam is such a good boy. He always knows how to make his mama proud and happy. He even apologized to me for getting married to you. He said that he was totally wrong for doing that and asked for my forgiveness. Wait, my husband actually said those things? That's impossible. He never hinted at wanting a divorce before. The last time I checked, he was perfectly content with our marriage, and he even expressed his gratitude for me giving birth to Lily. Well, he has obviously had a change of heart, and that's perfectly normal. I can totally understand his decision, though. After all, who could stand a deadweight wife who can't even accomplish the most basic household chores? I mean, really, what good are you? You're nothing but a burden to my son, and I'm sure he's much better off without you. Don't worry, I'll find Adam a new and beautiful wife as soon as possible. After all, he's a catch, and any woman would be lucky to have him. In fact, the other day I introduced him to some prettier and younger girls I know, and he was very interested. He even insisted that I set up a date for him with one of them. <laughs> you must be kidding me. Adam loves me and he has no intention of meeting up with other girls. What can I do? The truth hurts, but it's something that you have to face sooner or later. <laughs> but please, don't misunderstand me and think that I'm not being nice to you, because I am. You're just not fit for this family, and you're totally incapable of raising Lily. Other than that, you're just a worthless middle-aged woman who can't even take care of herself. It's not like you're amazingly beautiful or anything, more like the opposite. <laughs> Up until now, I'm still baffled as to why Adam chose you to be his wife in the first place. Enough. That's enough. I don't want to hear any more words from you. You've proved your point very clearly, so you don't have to continue talking down to me like this anymore. Now you even dare to raise your voice at me, huh? I mean, I already knew for a very long time that you're a no-good wife, but I didn't know that you're this arrogant and disrespectful. It seems like you never fail to surprise me. But don't go crying to your parents and telling them that I don't treat you well enough, because it'll ruin my reputation. Do you hear me? Penelope, where is my dear granddaughter Lily? I have been searching for her this whole time, but I haven't seen her anywhere. Where have you taken her? Give her back to me, you wicked witch. Why should I? I'm her mother, so she's going with me too. You're crazy. I thought you finally understood your place in the family and left us in peace. But why are you taking my granddaughter too? That's totally unfair. She's mine, and you have to return her to me at once or else I'll call the police. Look, I have no reasons to hand my daughter over to you. It's ironic how you keep accusing me of taking away Lily from you, but in reality, I'm her mother, not you. She's never been yours in the first place, so stop claiming that, it's ridiculous. My daughter deserves to grow up in a healthy environment, not in an environment where you think you are the boss and force everyone to live by your rules. Your way of thinking and imposing your ideas on others will do her more harm than good. What do you mean Lily is not mine? I'm her grandmother, of course she's mine. <sighs> you clearly have no intention of listening to others, do you? You know something? Both my husband and father-in-law are tired of your stubbornness. They've been trying to talk you out of your mind, hoping that your behavior towards me will change for the better. But no, you keep on mistreating me, conveniently disregard my role as a mother to Lily and a wife to Adam. As your behavior keeps worsening and worsening, Adam's and William's patience also runs out quicker. What? Why do my husband and my son have anything to do with this? Don't try to involve them in our conversation. Well, they kind of do, actually. I'm with them right now. Adam and I are moving into your house to live with William. Our lease for the apartment we're renting will expire soon, so you might want to pack your bags and leave too, because we won't come back there. Of course, you can always choose to continue living there, but remember to pay the rent. 
What? How could it be? Adam is my son, and William is my husband. There's no way they would betray me like that. Both of them detest you, and you're nothing but a burden to everyone around you. My husband and I are thrilled to hear that you've finally given up your child and moved out of the house. Me and Adam even agreed to move back into my old house to live with William after you leave. Adam even signed the divorce papers. Goodness, you still think you can fool everyone with those divorce papers? Adam told me that he never signed any divorce papers. You did everything on your own. Please, stop with your lies. I've had enough of them. Wh what How dare you call me a liar? You're the one who's lying. There's no way William and Adam would take your side because they hate you just as much as I do. Can't you see? No one hates me. It's only you who keeps bullying me since the day you moved in my apartment without consent. Your immature behaviors push everyone you love far away from you, even your own son and husband. I'm not going home, and I'm taking Lily with me. So there's nothing you can do about it other than pondering on your actions and trying to change your behavior. If you don't change your way, you won't get to see Lily ever again. What? Now you're threatening me? I tell you, Lily has a bright future ahead of her. And she surely doesn't want to spend her life with a useless cow like you. Return her to me at once, and I'll consider letting you stay in my house and tell my son to stop the divorce. Otherwise, Adam will dump you and force you to give up Lily's custody the hard way. I told you. Adam never wants to divorce me. Don't you get it? The whole time we've been living together with you, Adam always tried his best to defend me from you. In fact, the one who's getting divorced is you, Ophelia. What? Me? Why am I getting a divorce? Have you lost your mind? No, I'm completely normal. As a matter of fact, William has already left the divorce papers on the dinner table. He said he's already signed his side. And once you've done your part, William will file them as soon as possible. But why? What have I done to deserve this? I don't understand a thing. What's so difficult to understand? William is fed up with your passive-aggressive and childish behavior. You conveniently moved into my apartment, leaving your husband all alone in his house. What were you thinking? William has also hit his limit and decided that he's had enough of you. I think it's time that you're the one who has to pack your things and leave your own house. This isn't right at all. Where will I live from now on? Don't worry. William promised that he will pay you half the money to buy the house. So it should be enough for you to rent a decent place for your own. No, that's impossible. Why all of a sudden I'm the one who's getting kicked out? That's not fair to me at all. You have to help me. I would want to help you out, but there's nothing I can do. Your husband seems to have made up his mind about the divorce and... I don't think there's anything you can say or do to make him rethink his decision. You're such a wolf in sheep's clothing, a traitor, a backstabber. You're the one who tricked both my son and my husband to follow your evil plan. You're always making up imaginary stories in which you're the innocent and vulnerable daughter-in-law and I'm the bad person. You're the one who's been making up imaginary stories, not me. You conveniently lied about my husband demanding a divorce, but in reality, you orchestrated everything. You prepared the papers and even forged his signature on them. Don't think you'll get away with this so easily. I'm suing you for forgery. But don't worry, you'll eventually get out of jail and get back to real life, where you'll be spending all your time alone reflecting on your misbehaviors. No, no, no. Please stop. I don't want to hear any of this. Can you please tell my husband to rethink the divorce and let me move back in my house? Well, you have come here to collect your belongings and sign divorce papers, right? Maybe you can try to persuade him in person. In the end, this is a mess of your own creation, so you have to be the one who fixes it all, not me. Another thing, we'll just live here temporarily until we buy a new house, but you won't get to know the address. Maybe I'll consider letting you see Lily when you show me that you've changed, but not until then. But I never did anything wrong to begin with. I just wanted to give Lily the best life she could get. What's wrong about that? 
I don't deserve to spend my elderly years in loneliness. You can't do this to me. I want to be a grandmother. I already told all my friends how proud I am to have a granddaughter. What would they think of me now when I no longer have one? None of this would have happened if you chose to treat the people around you with respect. But no, you want to prove your dominance and make me inferior to you. You want to become the center and everything has to revolve around you? Guess what? Now you have to pay for what you did to me, your son, and your husband. No, this is not how things should go. I won't accept this. I'll sue you for not letting me see my grandchild. That's against the rules. No one can prevent me from seeing my grandchild. I'll win Lily's custody, and there's no way you're gonna stop me. Looks like something's acting so full of herself again. It seems like it's impossible to make you change your way in just a day or two. Well, enjoy living alone, and don't let me see you again. Having failed to persuade her husband to reconsider the divorce, Ophelia was ultimately forced to sign the papers and leave her old house. She was also sentenced to jail time and ordered to pay damages for forging my husband's signature. After being released from prison, she spent all of her remaining money on a lawyer in an attempt to win custody of Lily. But her efforts were unsuccessful and she eventually ended up in a big debt. Left alone unemployed to deal with a huge debt, Ophelia resorted to petty theft, which ultimately led to her arrest by the police. Meanwhile, my husband and I lived in perfect harmony with William. My father-in-law dotes on his granddaughter and showers her with love. With my family by my side, I know that I can look forward to a bright and joyful future. <laughs>